Welcome back to another episode of Get Swifty. My name's Bo, and this time around, I'm going to share with you my top 10 software tools that I use every day as an iOS developer. Let's get into it. Now, I did try ranking these based on how important and how often I use them, but when I got to the top five, I realized that they all came up pretty equal. So number 10 starts us off with app figures. Having a way to track your sales is super important for any developer trying to run a business. In saying that though, you don't need a service like App Figures for your analytics. Apple's own App Store Connect has already got you covered there. In fact, to use App Figures effectively, you'll need to connect it to your Apple account anyway. So what's the point? App Store Optimization. App Figures has a bunch of other tools that can help you research better keywords for your apps and even do a little spying on your competitors. It is a little pricey though, especially if you're an indie dev like myself. However, if you can get your hands on the GitHub Student Developer Pack, you'll be able to get free access to their growth here for an entire year. Plenty of time to hone those keywords. At number 9 we have text editors. My favourite at the moment is Sublime Text, but whatever editor you decide to go with, it should be lightweight and super quick to open. I use them for writing documentation, creating scripts, reading logs, and editing configuration files. I also have another video comparing a few of these and how they perform when opening very large files if you'd like to check that out. Number 8 is Music. I was hesitant to include this here because I wasn't sure I could classify it as a software tool, but I do think it's super important and that's why it's in this list. No matter which service you use, I would say most people, not all, will have some sounds playing to help them focus. I don't know how this works, maybe it drowns out other more distracting sounds, but for me it can be essential to my productivity. It keeps a good rhythm going and gives me a sense of time passing. I prefer instrumental music, but I know a few folks who like to listen to audiobooks and podcasts while they work. That's probably a little too distracting for me though. Number seven is communication. This is actually a super broad topic, and so there's a few services that I have bundled into this slot. Zoom, Slack, and Discord are my main modes of communication. I use these mostly for connecting with clients, but they are also great for getting involved with your developer community. Speaking of which though, if you would like to get in touch to ask questions about iOS development, you can either leave a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter. Number six, Sketch. I know a lot of people are now moving to other tools like Figma, and I think that's where I'll end up going on my next project too, but the point of number six is that some kind of design tool should be in your developer toolkit. Early on when I started developing my own apps, I would just start writing code. Doing things this way can take way longer though, because when programming out a UI, you're usually focused on single elements and not how they work together as a whole. For example, you'll build a button, only to find out that it doesn't look right with the text field design you wrote earlier. So what do you do? Change the text field or change the button. Both of which, if done in code, would take way too long, and there's no guarantee that you would get it right anyway. It's much easier and faster to tackle it from a high level, and just draw that stuff out first. It Get a cohesive UI and then start coding it. You'll save time and make far fewer mistakes this way. Number five is PAW, P-A-W, or any API tools really. Most people might be familiar with Postman, but come on, what year is it again? If you're looking for a non-gender name API development tool slash HGV client, I highly recommend PAW. For me, it looks better than Postman, is native, performs well, and they were giving out free licenses to everyone not too long ago, so I love them for that. I mainly use Paul for running network requests before I build them into my own apps. It's far easier to correct mistakes at this stage than in code, especially given the not so helpful errors reported by Swift's JSON decoder. The main takeaway here is that not all backend services are created equal. Make no assumptions. When the documentation tells you that a value is non-nullable but it comes back empty anyway, that is the worst kind of betrayal and is bound to cause long-term trust issues. Number four, iTerm2. Any command line tool is fine, but I really love iTerm2. It has great customizability and some really cool quality of life improvements over the stock terminal app that actually makes it kind of fun to use. I'm sure a lot of developers watching this video already have some experience with the command line, but gaining expertise with it hasn't historically been much of a priority for many iOS developers. I was about three years into my career as an iOS developer before learning how to use it effectively. Before that, all I knew was how to run a script that someone else had created and look around in folders. These days, I mostly use it for SSHing into remote servers, running build operations and using Git. Which brings me to number three, Git Kraken. First off, awesome name. This app is the main way I interact with version control on my projects. I know that a lot of devs prefer to use the command line, but that requires some practice and can be a little scary for people new to version control. Now, for those of us who don't know all the commands, want something nice to look at, view GitHub issues, respond to pull requests, and solve merge conflicts with ease, an app like Git Kraken is the way to go. 
You know, for me, there was a time where Git clients kind of fell into the same category as note taking or email apps, where like every now and then I would look around for something else, but keep coming back to the one that is just good enough because there's nothing really groundbreaking happening in those areas. Git Kraken is a little different though. I think this one is here to stay for me. I'll be comparing a number of these Git clients in a future video. So if you'd like to be notified of when that comes out, well, you know what to do. Number two, Safari. I also have Firefox and Chrome installed as backups, but the battery and resource usage of Safari is just far superior. Obvious uses include searching the internet for answers to your programming problems, downloading other software, and applying for work. But the developer tools that come bundled with most browsers are also super useful, even to us iOS devs. Maybe you're working on a project for someone that doesn't have good API documentation, or you're building something entirely as a third party. Inspecting the requests that your browser is making is a great way to see what's going on behind the scenes and will give you the information you need to replicate those calls inside your own app. I should mention though, this won't always be easy. Many websites don't expose the API all that readily. Now we're at number one and we all know what this is. Obviously, it's Xcode. Sure, you can create your project in something like VS Code and use the command line build tools to compile it. Personally, I feel that Xcode has grown far too bloated and slow. I would love to see a new lighter weight IE released. WWDC 21 is less than two weeks away and I've got my fingers crossed that we'll see some stability improvements at the very least. Well, that's it for my top list. If it's different to yours, please share in the comments. We're all here to learn from each other after all and I might be missing out on some really awesome tools. Before I go, one other popular piece of software that I didn't make it onto the list, but I know a lot of mobile devs use is Charles Proxy. It's not on my list because I just have never had a need for it. It just doesn't fit into my workflow. I think that if I did more reverse engineering, I would have it as part of my toolkit, but not for everyday development. <laughs> Got any ideas or feedback, please let me know and I'll see you next time.